stampers. My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I'm going to bring it up closer to the camera so you can see it. And I'm going to show you at several different angles here so you can see what this is. It is a technique that sometimes is called Joseph's Coat. And it is mostly an emboss resist technique. And um, I'm going to change it up a little bit today or show you at various stages so you can decide um, what you'd like to do with it because there's an awful lot that you can do with this kind of technique using exactly the same stamp. So what we're going to need to make this is I have this on a piece of gray granite cardstock eight and a half by five and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter and then I have a piece of whisper white that measures three and three quarters by five then in this case the colors I used were um, mango melody and those are the inks I'm using mango melody and uh, grapefruit grove so I took a piece of Grapefruit Grove to um, put this on here. And depending on what I decide here, I may trim this back down again. But let's start with these dimensions. Three and three quarters by five, five um, and a quarter by four, and then your card base. And on this one, the um, I, I uh, embossed in... I think it was Grapefruit Grove on this one on the inside and this gray granite is light enough that you could uh, not necessarily put one of these pieces in the middle um, but um, you certainly could have a second piece that you put here even doing this and embossing a little bit of the trees inside. So um, that's what we're going to do today. And so almost all of our work is going to be done on this panel here. So um, the very first thing I'm going to do, so this is all sponging. And um, it might be interesting to just explain the procedure to you. Basically what you do is you lay down whatever color you want um, and I liked how bright this was, so I'm going to continue to use these colors. But you sure could use a green and a blue. Um, you could use a flirty flamingo that's a kind of a pink color and um, balmy blue and or granny apple green. What I would suggest to you is that whatever colors you use on your base be very bright. I tried doing a couple um, and I was so disgusted I may have thrown them away. <laughs> Putting some, um, there's one that's got blue on it um, with green on the bottom, yellow, and kind of a pink. A um, couple of different ones, but you can see they're basically unremarkable. Um, you can't see how bright they are like this one. Um, and it has to do with when I put on the shimmer paint, because I did put shimmer paint on these and that the shimmer paint stuck to the embossing. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to avoid that. Uh, so what we're going to do is use the two colors that I've started here, and we're going to use Mango Melody and Flirty Fleming, I'm sorry, and uh, Grapefruit Grove, because they're such nice, bright colors. I just love the way these came out. Okay, and I've got some sponges that I've been working with here. Um, and I'm going to take my grapefruit fruit grove and I'm basically going to cover the top half of my card here. And we're just going to sponge on some color. Oh, I started to explain exactly what this process does. When you emboss your image here in... Uh, Versamark and then you add clear powder, what it does is it preserves the brightness of whatever colors you've laid down underneath. Then when whatever you put over the top 
resists any ink coming onto it, and that's why it's called emboss resist. So you use like paper towels or tissue paper or whatever you have, inky rag, <laughs> and wipe anything that comes over the top and that beautiful bright color shows up from the bottom, from underneath. And that's what makes this uh, whole process so pretty. And you can do one where you just added all kinds of crazy colors on the bottom and then put a floral design in clear and see what kind of a, of a resist you get. I'm, there's so much you can do with this particular technique that it really is kind of fun to, um, to do. And that's probably enough of the Grapefruit Grove here. So I'm going to call that one done. And I'm going to close up my ink because that's all we need it for. And then I'm going to um, go into the mellow, Mango Melody. And I'm going to put that on the bottom half. And I'm going to cross over a little bit in the center so that I get a little bit of both colors blended in the middle. And both of these are so nice and bright that you really do get quite a nice effect with this. So, um, takes just a second really to do because these colors are fairly saturated so it's pretty easy to do. So there we go. That's pretty much all I want to do with this. I don't want any of the white showing through and I could add a little extra color here any place that we've got and there's probably enough left on this one to fill in any places that I felt needed a little extra. But there we go. All right. So in this case, I used the stamp set in the woods, and I've got these beautiful trees here that go across, and I've got my Versamark here. Let me grab my Versamark pad. So one of the things we need to do is make sure that the ink is dry on here, or the powder's gonna try to stick to everything. So I'm going to take a second and use a heat tool and uh, dry this ink, and I'll quiet the video while I do that. Okay, so now I'm going to take my embossing buddy here. And this part is very, very important because you're using clear powder. And while you won't be able to see the clear powder, if you get it, and I did on this one and I'll show you, if you get a little clear powder and you don't see it, you don't brush it away, then you also get a little embossed resist here where you're not necessarily wanting it. So um, it, using the embossing buddy here and getting this completely covered, be generous with it. Um, and then doing your stamping and your clear embossing will make an enormous difference in how happy you are with the result. So the next thing I'm going to do is ink up my stamp here. And I'm taking my Versamark to the pad because this is a very large stamp. And I just re-inked my Versamark. So I'm pretty happy with this. Now, I want to center my stamp over the area that I have blended the two colors so I get a good transition here from top to bottom. And I think that is going to do it. Get a lot of pressure. This is a nice big stamp. And there we go. I can see that I have great coverage on this stamp. So now I've got some clear embossing powder here and my spoon here. 
Okay, so I'm going to set my clear embossing powder on my trees. Make sure I get plenty of coverage. And while you all can't see much there, you might be able to see the powder on there. I'm not sure. There, maybe. All right, so now again, I'm going to quiet the video while I heat set that powder. Okay, so there it is. And once again, I don't know how much you can see that. I'll try and twist it in the camera lens here. I'm not sure you can see that or not there. Maybe that way you can start to see a little bit of the embossing on there. Anyway, so the next thing is that this needs to dry. Now, to save a little bit of time, what I'm going to do with this next is to um, put some gray granite ink on this card. Now, I've already started that process here, so to save a little bit of time, I had started on this one where I did it just exactly the same way I did this one. And sponging is one of those things that just takes some time, and so I thought I would save a little bit of time by doing my sponging a little bit ahead of time. Now you can see the difference here between this card and this card. This almost looks green and not gray. This uh, gray granite has a little bit of brown in it. And this, I think, is just lovely, just the way it is. So that is the normal uh, emboss resist or Joseph's Coats uh, process. And a lot of people stop here and mount their card like this and put it on their card base and they have a lovely card. What's different about what I did here is I also covered this in order to get it darker. The darker your surrounding image is, the more dramatic your colored image is. So. Uh, on, on this one, what I did was I also came over the top of the gray with some Knight of Navy to come over the top of this to darken that even more. And I've seen people even use uh, black to come over the top of that to make it darker. And then once I got it as dark as I wanted, then I used the Frost shimmer paint, the white shimmer paint, to uh, come across and kind of muddy that whole thing and get my frost paint. And then I used, um, in this case, my rag to go over the top and clean any of the residue that was on here so that this embossing resists whatever all else you're putting on this. For instance, on this one, I hadn't done that process yet because I just put the ink on there just before I started the video. So you can see I'm taking a little bit of that gray ink off and see how it brightens that up. I think that's lovely just the way it is. And I was thinking rather than going to this process, which is only making it darker with whatever your choice is, uh, that's a darker ink. In my case, I used Knight of Navy, um, and then I used the Frost. Um, and I, you know, I'm really tempted. I wonder because I think I want to put this together differently, so that you have a different look. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the Knight of Navy to this. So you can see 
what I mean about darkening the image. You can see it doesn't take a lot of the Knight of Navy and the more of the darker colors you put around this, the more dramatic and bright your um, undercoats look. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one. And on this one, what I'm going to do is not put the shimmer white and give you another variation of how you could finish this. Okay, so you still get the hint of of the orange underneath that. And then you clean up the top and there you have that beautiful um, emboss resist with this kind of swirl of color. And I had a thought as I was getting ready to make this video, and I think what I'm going to do is take this piece and I'm going to cut it down just a bit. So I'm going to take, oh, a quarter of an inch off the bottom here, and I am going to take three quarters of an inch off the top. So I still have this, and this ends up now being three and three quarters by four. So this needs to be four by four and a quarter in order to be able to do the surround on this. I think that's right. Nope, I'm off a bit. So this has to come down here another quarter of an inch. So, oh, it is four and a quarter and I just didn't cut it right. <laughs> okay, so this will now mat on here. And I had a thought of a way to put this together. So I'm gonna put this one together without the frost and adding the frost gives you this kind of a look, but you can do what I'm doing here, and I'm going to make this card go more in the, like this, so that we can add a sentiment onto the bottom here. Okay. So um, I've added just a little bit more of the gray on here, and I've selected a um, stamp here that uh, is uh, out of the Healing Hugs um, stamp set that has to do with um, Get Well, and this one says, Wishing You a Quick and Complete Recovery. And I have a friend who just had a knee replacement, and this is going to be the perfect card to send to her. So I'm going to put this stamp on my block here, and I think I'm going to go ahead and mount this uh, to my block here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mount this piece onto my Grapefruit Grove layering piece here. So there, I've got that and then um, put this piece right up here towards the top because I think that will give me still plenty of space to put that down below. So I'm gonna put just a little pencil mark here 
on the bottom. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my stamping. And I was thinking of doing that stamping in this uh, gray granite so that it is tone on tone. There we go. All right, so now I erase my little pencil mark. I'm going to put this piece on dimensionals, and then you'll have to tell me what you think about the Joseph's Coat technique, first of all, and then secondly, whether you like it better, more dark and stark, or with the frost on it. And I used the, the white uh, shimmer paint on that, but one could easily use the champagne and get kind of a gold cast on that, which might be kind of interesting as well. There we go. It says, wishing you a complete, quick and complete recovery. And it still feels to me like it needs a few bells and whistles here. So let's see what kind of choices we have. Something from our sequin collection. I'm thinking that uh, some of these um, silver sequins. Oh dear, I've got more on there than I wanted. Uh, maybe with just a little bit of paper. There we go. That's pretty good. And um, then I need my pick tool. Okay, so if I've got my pick tool here, I can pick up a little bit of glue and put a couple of these silver sequins around on my card. There we go. All right, that is the project for today. I have been missing a bit in action because of the holiday, and I don't know why I did it, but I had lots of events planned, <laughs> and I couldn't get back to my videos. So um, all of my out-of-town guests are now gone, and I'm sort of feeling like I want to be back in my studio here and putting some projects together. So I've got two or three lined up for you uh, over the next uh, several days. And uh, here are two. And on this one, I put this decoration on the inside, uh, which makes it a note card, which you could put anything on, really. This one says, wishing you a com quick and complete recovery. And I will put some Mango Melody trees the same way I did here with uh, some embossing. And um, let me, in fact, let me do that so you can see exactly how I do that in a color when you don't have that color embossing powder. So um, what you do is you use your embossing buddy, of course, here. To cover this area so that I don't get powder where I don't want it. And um, I use my Versamark. And what you do is you ink up your Versamark, your stamp. Let's see, I'll need my scratch paper back down here to do this. And I'm going to use the Mango Melody this time. So what you do is you put plenty of Versamark on your stamp first. And then you add whatever color you're going to want to emboss in on top of that. 
and Versa Mark does not affect your your color pad at all. It's uh, not something that interferes in any way. And um, let's see, I, this edge that's going to go on the card, and then I'm going to stamp right down here these trees. And then you just have to have your clear powder and your heat gun ready to go so that while this is still damp, you can take clear powder and cover your image and you get embossing powder sticking to your inked area there. And then I'll use my heat tool here and quiet the video. And there you get embossing in whatever color you would like. So very simple process to get um, colored embossing by using Versamark and your ink pad and then clear powder to get what you want colored. Okay, so now that is the project finally for the day. <laughs> so thank you again so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. I do so appreciate it. Um, and like I said, I've uh, been missing a bit uh, with the holiday uh, and lots and lots of activity going on, uh, but I'm back. And so I have two or three videos planned over the near term, very late on my paper pumpkin this time. Um, in fact, that's probably going to be the next one. Um, but that is the project for today. Now this could be bumped up by putting the frost on top of all of this and then again wiping off over the images here. But I love the emboss resist technique. And this one with many colors in the back is called Joseph's Coat. Um, so let's see, this is November, so the prize draw for November is the it's the country lane so the stamp set the designer series paper the chicken wire element and some galvanized paper and that is the prize draw for the month of November and all you have to do to get in the prize draw is put an order on my website www.albedinger.stampinup.net um, and um, that um, any amount will put you in the drawing for the monthly prize and um, so and all of these things can be ordered right on that same website uh, everything that I use today is open and available on that website uh, we're getting ready to come out with the new occasions catalog if you're one of my customers you'll probably get a catalog they start coming out right around the 10th of December and so right after mid-month mid in December, I will start doing projects from the new catalog so you can start seeing some of the new fun things that are available out there. So um, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. And or you could join my team. The join uh, opportunities for January are awesome. Um, it's $175 worth of product for $99 to start. And then they have a beautiful craft and carry tote bag that you can add to your order for $50. It is absolutely amazing. And so as time goes on, I'll be talking a little bit more about that. Or if you'd like to talk about it with me, my number's always listed below the video, and I'd be happy to chat with you. So that's it for me. I'll be back soon with more cards and more projects. Bye.